The last few years have seen an exponential growth in archery, whether it be by target archery, 3D, or hunting. It is a very passionate sport for so very many people, and many of them believe that there's only a single way to do something. I subscribe to a different train of thought that what works for you, what is most comfortable for you and your application is what you really should consider. There are many anchor points, for instance, many styles. Some people anchor such that the string touches the nose. Other people anchor behind the back of the head with the thumb in, in a notch for some reason. It gives them a longer pull. Other people like to keep a very smooth release comfortable to them based upon a history of, say, finger release. Some people use release, some people don't. What works for you is important. I'm going to show you something that I feel works for me. While this may serve mostly as a review for many people, I'd like to approach the archery sights much in the same way as we would do with rifle or pistol, and I'll start with open sights. As you can see here, a typical open sight starts out with a simple alignment of the rear sight and front sight vertically. The next alignment is left and right centered in within the notch. This gives the balance for left and right and windage. Now if we look at the rifle sight, we see that we line up as if we're looking at it from the side, from A to B, giving a sight line to the target at point C. Lining this up on a target, we can see that we stack our imaginary point immediately above at C. Rifle scopes work in principle exactly the same way. Whether they give you modification in, in distance by magnification or they're straight one-to-one -one or fixed power, they all essentially do the same thing. They give you a sighting point. Except rather than having a front and back as an open sight, the front and back functions are established at point A and point B in the optics giving you the visual point to your target at point C. And of course you can adjust for windage and elevation, but the optic itself is fastened directly to the rifle and is quite sturdy. If you look at it at a target, as we see here, you simply put the crosshairs where you want the bullet to go, and for a given range and sighted position, that's where the bullet should land. Now let's turn our attention to a typical modern compound hunting bow. Target bows are very similar, but there may be a little different consideration depending on exactly whether or not your competition allows for scopes, which gives a little magnification, or even crosshair location single pin, very much like the rifle scope. Now here is a silhouette of a drawn bow. You do have a sight line from A, which in this case I've illustrated by a peep sight, and B, which is the front sight. This happens to be an extended sight as I've shown here. Modern archery sighting is generally done by use of a pin. It fixes a point, adjusted left or right for windage, and up and down on a mount for elevation at a given distance. Here at A we see the peep sight. This is a very simple aperture, a round device, generally without magnification or any bells and whistles, just a round hole that we look through. Now we honestly find that holding the bow, we're able to align that pin on our target with our concentration based upon our eye. That's really a third point I've illustrated here. Pratt fall to this is, is we often find that our anchor point varies slightly, resulting in a, quite a bit of variation in where our arrow lands. I'm not really going to discuss the reason why it's so difficult to set a good anchor point. We'll just accept it as fact and consider a couple of things that will affect your accuracy easily. As we see, if we have the typical traditional short scope up front close to the riser, bow sight, we have a shorter radius, sight radius, and it, it's a little more difficult to align those pin and the peep. Now if we extend that out, say as 
with shown here with the A and B where we have the site pushed further forward, that's even better. If you happen to be geometrically portioned such that you're a tall guy or have a very rearward anchor point, you can extend the bow draw. And if you extend the bow draw, you even further stretch out the peep at A and B. Consider the following illustration. Which one of these peeps has the pin most centered? Is it A, B, C, or D? Well, how about now? C really jumps out at you, doesn't it? And that's largely because we have that inner circle close to the outer circle. It's easy to tell the uniformity or the concentricness of those two circles. So let's put it all together. Did the illustration help? Let's take a more natural setting. Let's assume we have a target. You visualize your impact point. Raise the bow. Draw and anchor the bow. Then looking through the peep sight, align the rings of the peep sight with the front ring of the sight, the fluorescent ring. Then move the entire bow as you need to to put the appropriate pin for the yardage on that imaginary spot. As the target is further away from you, you will have to raise the bow to compensate for the arrow drop. You want to also, before you let the arrow go, look at the sight's level. This will help you protect from cambering errors, and that's where you lean the bow right or left, because as you lean that bow right or left, you shift the apparent impact point. So the natural thing then to do with a cambered bow is to lift it up and put that pin, the correct pin for the distance on the imaginary point. This will actually cause your impact point to shift as you see here. This cambering error makes the bow look as if you have windage on it, a strong crosswind one way or the other. Now the further your pins are away from one another, i.e. the slower the bow is, the heavier the arrow is, the further apart your pins represent will represent themselves in greater error left and right. Let's look at some sources of errors for your shot. Well, you have wind, wobble, distance estimating errors, bow camber, grip faults, and target movements. Now of these, which one of these types of errors is most easily adjusted for when you're in a hunting position? Well, I think you can align the two rings and get a better anchor point about as easily as you can do any of the above. At least that's certainly my personal opinion of it. I, I hope you have an opportunity next season to test the theory. This is a pre-existing clip I shot this summer. Now, I didn't shoot it specifically for this video, but I did use the sighting method. Now, where I'm starting at is actually my zero point. As I walk past the bird feeder cross, I go up the yard and you'll see the first stop you'll see is wrapped with two rounds of yellow tape. That's my 20 yard marker. I ground sterilize it so that it doesn't grow up and I don't have to weed eater it and I don't hit it with a mower. The next one is 25. The next one is 30. And the final position is at 35 yards. I don't hunt at 35 yards simply because I can't reliably deliver the arrows at that distance. But using the sight method I was able to do this. You could do it too.